Lamb of God. He finished it on the cross so we could have all things that pertains to life and godliness. Amen. Well, let's pray. Help me pray. Father, you saw the hands of sons and daughters lifted in this house today, and we're believing for you to move on behalf of every single need. Lord, we pray, God, for there be healing in the sick body this morning. Lord, and we're just believing for you to touch those across the land that's preaching this great gospel. Move mildly in their service this morning. Draw people to that house of worship that's worshiping you in spirit and in truth, which can only come by faith in what your son did at Calvary through his death. Hallelujah. Amen. We all, the only can we there find true worship unto our great God. Hallelujah. We pray, God, you draw people to the streaming today, Lord, here and there, Lord God, and also to the house of God. Join to, we're praying, God, for you to send people that will join together as we proclaim this great gospel in this final hour of the church age. Lord, help us this morning. Anoint our singers as they bring forth them and bring us into the throne of worship this morning. As always, I surely need your help. I'm asking for a special anointing of truth this morning. Help me to speak with plainness of speech, with clarity and understanding this morning. I'm asking God to give us people with ears to hear this morning, Lord, in this house, in this region, and across the land, Lord, as we go out by live streaming. We're asking that you draw people. Give us people with an ear to hear the truth this morning. And Father, once again, we love you. We give you all all the glory, all the praise this morning. So thankful for the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, your Son, hallelujah, and our, and our Savior this morning. We're thankful for it all, hallelujah. Let us glory in the Lamb this morning. Let us glory in the cross. Let us proclaim his blood this morning and what he did 2,000 years ago to redeem a lost and a dying world back into him and also to strengthen and equip a church to march through this final final hour of the church age in victory hallelujah and that victory is found in Jesus and we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you all the honor asking it all in the mighty name of Jesus give the Lord a good hand clap of praise let's worship our great God amen, amen. good morning everyone how y'all doing y'all missed me last week didn't you <laughs> This is for sister over here. Oh, it's so glad, good to have time off, but it's also good to get home. It's always that. I mean, you stay gone for a week, you're ready to come home then. But uh, <laughs> let's praise the Lord this morning. Y'all ready to praise him? Amen. Give him glory this morning. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Well, he woke me up this morning.
Well, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. There's just something about the Holy Ghost I can't explain, but I've got it in my hands, I've got it in my feet, I've got it in my walk. so good it's been a great week this week this past week even though it went back to work so but it's still been a good day i'm mean, a good week as how about y'all everything's going good huh that's always good ain't it the lord i always say the lord is always good i don't care how bad it gets it's always good he knows exactly what he needs to do in our lives and he's doing it not to hurt us but to help us he's showing us and growing us and and he wants us to get to a point 
where he's always trusting, we're always trusting on him. Not to the world's devices and all the things the world offers, but he's always moving us toward the cross, always to Jesus Christ. Because through Jesus Christ, that's the only way you're going to get to the Father. That's the only way you get to the Father is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Ain't the truth? Amen. 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 Well, I woke up early this morning. My heart was beating right on time. I said, Lord, I truly thank you for opening up these eyes of mine. I went over to my window, and while looking through the shade, once again I had to tell him,
Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our glory and all the honor this morning. Just lift your hands one more time in the house of God. Worship him. Give him glory. and Magnify and exalt our great God this morning and the lamb that was slain. Even before the foundation of the world but was manifest in this final hour. Amen. For a time such as this, hallelujah, he has been given to redeem a lost and a dying world. Hallelujah. And to strengthen and to cause a church to endure. Hallelujah. Not just endure, but to march into eternity in victorious fashion. Hallelujah. We're so thankful today for this great salvation that we have. What a great reason we have now to worship him and honor him with a portion of our finances. Let's worship him with our giving this morning. We're just simply passing the plate where this is not a beg-a-thon. Amen. We're just giving you an opportunity to give and sow into the work of the Lord. Amen. Here at Crossway Ministries to help us to continue to take this gospel throughout this region and once again, literally around the world to as many as would log on and drink of the water of life freely. Amen. Those that are here, we're going to march down and drop our offering in the bowl. Those that are listening by internet, we want to encourage you to go over to our church website, Crossway Ministries. Dot org. As soon as it opens up, amen, it'll give you instructions how to give by PayPal. If you're not able to do that, just mail your gift in. Mail it to Crossway Ministries, P.O. Box 9097, Greenwood, Mississippi, 38930, amen. But however you give, we just thank you so very much from the bottom of our heart, amen. Thank you for partnering with us and, and sowing into the Lord's work here at Crossway. Way ministries, amen. Father God, we just simply ask you this morning to bless this offer and to multiply it many times over to meet the need. Bless the giver this morning, Lord, and bless them abundantly, Lord God. And we just thank you for this opportunity once again to sow into your work in this region. Lord, we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus once again, giving you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And everybody said amen and amen. Amen. I'm going to be the first in line this morning. Praise God.
Praise the Lord. Um, I was just thinking earlier, you know, there's a lot of people that's caught up in the world's, all the things going on in the world today, and rightly so. It's not, you know, it's, it's a lot of going on right now. But, you know, I always, for some reason, the, Lord, the Holy Spirit always sends me back to the time when Elijah, or Elijah and his servant was in, the, in, a, in a house, and uh, I think it was a Syrian army. I can't remember which army it was. They were in, encompassed. They were around, encompassed around his house. And uh, Elijah was going on his normal thing. Didn't bother him a bit. You know, he wasn't afraid, Brother Reed. He wasn't afraid of nothing that was going on because he was safely in, Jesus, in, in, the, in God's arm or Jesus' arms. Um, but yet the servant, he was all shook up about. He come in and he told Elijah. He said. Well, they're all, they're camped all around us, all around us, and I don't know what we're going to do. What we're going to do? You know, that's mostly what everybody's saying today. What we're going to do? What are we going to do in these days? You know, everything looks bleak and everything looks bad. But Elijah told him, says, Lord, he, he looked up to the Lord and he said, Lord, open the eyes of my servant so he can see what was go what's going on. And he opened the eyes of the servant, and the servant saw a chariot of angels all around. That was whole lot. It was huge. You know, a host of angels and chariots and things around him that, that that his servant couldn't see beforehand. So don't get discouraged with all this stuff. It does mess you up if you sit here and constantly and yes. get the stuff fed to your mind. And, you know, that's what Satan does. He, he fills your mind with doubt. Yes. And that's what he wants to do because, see, if he can get your mind off of Christ and get your mind on the doubt that's going on in this world today because, man, you can't trust man. Yeah, it's been too many people come and go. You can't trust people. You can't trust man because, like I said, man is just like anybody else. He can fail. He can falter. He can stumble. He can fall. He can do all kind of things. But Christ is solid. He's a solid Amen. rock. Amen. He always Amen. will be and forevermore will be that way. And we can look to that solid rock if we just keep our minds, keep our eyes focused on him and not the things around us. Faith is, faith is things unseen. You, you see what I'm saying? So we can't look at what what's going on with our eyes because it will fail you every time. Satan, Satan's a liar. He's been a liar from the start. And Jesus Christ is our redeemer. And he will be our redeemer as long as we put our faith and keep our faith in him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.
Amen. We shall. Yes, in an amen to that this morning. How great is the love of our great God toward us that he would send his only begotten son down the cross to redeem fallen humanity, wicked people, even the vilest of sinners. Amen. To to redeem us. Hallelujah. How great is that love. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. That he would send his partner or companion in creation. Amen. To die on that cruel cross. Amen. So that he might be able to redeem fallen humanity. Amen. There's no greater love than the man that lay his life down. Hallelujah. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Precious Spirit of the Lord in this house today. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, thank you so much, singers and musicians. Amen. Thank you for ushering us into the uh, place of praise and worship and spirit and truth this morning. Amen. If I haven't already said it, I'm thankful for those that are here this morning. Thankful for those that are joining us by internet, wherever you are. We're delighted that you saw fit to be with us today for this very important word that the Lord has uh, is going to give us this morning and also those that would join us at a later time. As always, I've got much to say, very little time to say it in. Once again, I've, before I go any further, let me remind everybody we are... We need to get, uh, oh my goodness, we're, we're, we're in the last hour, we're in the last days of the church age. This thing is wrapping up, amen, hallelujah. We need to recognize that. If we can't see that, if we don't know that, we might just need to examine us and see if we are in the faith and if we are even saved, amen, because that saved person, he's going to recognize, amen, the day and time in which we live, and he's going to be eagerly awaiting the return of our Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bypass all the uh, preliminaries and announcement this morning. Let's go straight to the Word. I want you to take your Bibles this morning. Go over to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And uh, I'm, I'm just for the sake of clarity and understanding, and there's a good bit of what I'm going to read that I'm not going to necessarily deal with specifically, though we read this passage of Scripture, this place in the Bible, many, many times we talk from it, we preach from it, times that I cannot even number, but I want to bear down on specific thought this morning in truth. But let's look, let's just begin reading in Romans chapter 8, and let's just begin in verse 1. Romans chapter 8, now understanding Paul just came out of Romans chapter 7, amen, a place of condemnation because he was at that point in time as a saved man, he was attempting to live and serve God by his own flesh by keeping the law, amen. Amen. And the Bible says that he he described it as death, amen. He described that place as death, amen. We don't want to be there, amen. We want to be where it begins to speak about things in Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 1. In Romans 7, he was condemned. He he experienced that, death, condemnation. So he says when, when, when he realized the answer was once again what who Jesus is and what he did at Calvary. You can't separate the person Jesus from what he came to do. You cannot do that. It's not possible spiritually or biblically or scriptural speaking, amen, though people do that. In the church, they pay no mind to the cross. They identify with Jesus. But in essence, you're really creating, manufacturing within your mind another Jesus. The Jesus that God gave us is always tied to the cross, just as the lamb was always tied to the brazen altar, which is a type of Christ crucified. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, There is therefore now, everybody say now, there is therefore now, Paul was, I believe he was on shouting grounds right here now. Amen. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. 
Now, just in case we need to bring clarity, there's some that are saying when you see the phrase in Christ Jesus, it's not referring to the cross. Well, the Bible doesn't teach that either. We need to be careful what we hear. We need to be careful who we hear, what we hear, how we hear, and all of that. It's our responsibility. But when you see the phrase, the terminology, the words in Christ Jesus, it's always referring to the work of Christ on the cross and our union in his death. Your reference for that is quite simple. It's Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. Don't you know? Don't you know, church? Don't you know that so many of us were baptized, look at it, into Jesus Christ. We're baptized into his death. See, the death is the place where that transaction took place. Amen. Now, who, who did that work? Well, the Holy Spirit did when, he, when our faith was registered in what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. So, when you see the words in Christ Jesus, it's identifying with our faith exclusively in the cross and the work of the Holy Spirit, amen, as we put our faith in the cross, amen, the finished work of Jesus. Amen. He said, therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Be reminded again, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 3, you are dead through the cross and your faith in it. And your life, guess what, is hid in God with Christ Jesus. Amen. That's how important that this understanding of being in Christ Jesus is to us through faith in the cross because there we're dead to the old man and the old sin, the sin nature. We're dead to all of that, the sin and the allies of sin. We're dead to all of that. We're a new creation in Christ Jesus, remember? Amen. He were crucified with him. We were raised up in him, a new creature, born again. But even in that place of being in Christ, being born again, and all of that's great, praise God. Even in that place, we must, and I put emphasis on must, we must keep our faith in that redeeming place so the Holy Spirit can continue to work in our life. That's the danger, amen. Say people are moving their faith away from that redeeming place, amen, and beginning to look to themselves and other things. Very dangerous time in which we live, but it doesn't have to be dangerous for that born-again believer. And it won't be a dangerous time. We can view what's going on around us, and we can pray for people and share the gospel with people. But us, we are hid in Christ, just like the Bible says. We're hid in him. We are dead to everything that we once were alive to in Adam. Amen. We're dead to all of that, and our life, present life, is hid in God with Christ, amen, by virtue of our faith in the cross, amen. It's the working of the Holy Spirit. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but let's, let's read on, amen. That's, uh, I, sometimes I have to stop and I, and I speak about certain things and I get wrapped up there. It's all so great. It's all so wonderful. And he says, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Walking after the flesh is walking according to our own willpower, our own ways. That's the carnal. That's the fleshly man. That's the reason Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, deny that man, deny self, take up the cross, do it daily, and follow me. Amen. Keep my word, follow me. That's the only way we can follow him is denying all of that fleshly stuff amen, that we want to cling to, and the church is bad about it, amen. And it said, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, amen. After the Spirit, what the Spirit is showing us, what the Spirit is leading us into, where the Spirit is working, amen. Walking after the Spirit is a work of the Spirit, As once again, as we register faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. The Holy Spirit, amen, recognizes that, and there he works, Amen. There he becomes the quickening spirit to us, and that quickening work of the spirit is bringing life. He's the spirit of life. Amen. Let's look at verse 2. It says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. We need to understand, uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we need to understand what that means desperately. Amen. The title of the message this morning is The Cross 
and the law of the spirit of life, taken from verse 2 there. But I, want to, I don't want to stop reading that. I want to go on, then I'm going to come back, amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, I want you to keep your eyes fixed on that. Let me read another verse or two. But all of this is tied together, so joined together here, amen. Look what it says in verse Three, for the law, for, for what the law could not do, now he's speaking of another law. He's speaking of the law of Moses and really any type of law, whether it be the Ten Commandments or the law of Moses, any type of law that we make within ourselves or any type of law that the church introduces to us and they, they're they big on that and they'll tell you now if you'll do this, thus and such, which is really nothing more than religious calisthenics, very few will tell you and preach to you about the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus because they don't understand the finished work of Jesus on the cross and how the Holy Spirit works. So we're going to look at that more today, amen. So for what the law could not do and that it was weak in the flesh, amen. It, the, the law, uh, if we're talking about the law of Moses, which does include that, it just identifies sin, amen. And it even really falls short of doing that because sin is a whole lot more than the Big Ten. Amen. But it doesn't give you any power, no ability to uh, overcome that sin. It just identifies that and then hangs the penalty of the broken law over your head, which is death. Paul said in, in, in Romans chapter 7, said, oh, me trying to live my own, uh, by my own, my own will, keeping the law is death. Amen. It's death. And he said, for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent it. God sent it. Amen. The, the same God that gave us the law, amen, God sent his son. Amen. The, the law was there to uh, show us the exceedingly righteousness of God and the exceeding sinfulness of man. Amen. The law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Amen. The law was that which broke us and brought us to the place that Paul found himself in Romans chapter 7 where he came to his senses and said, Oh, wretched man that I am. Who's going to deliver me from the body of this death? See, he came to the place where he realized that who wasn't him. It had to be someone other than him. And that other is the one that God spoke about right here. God sent in his own son. In the likeness of sinful flesh, that just simply means that he became a man, not a sinner. Amen. And he said, and for sin, for that fin sin dilemma, amen, he became a sin sacrifice for us. Amen. What he did, he didn't do for himself, amen, though he received glory from the Father for that, what he did at Calvary. Amen. All of that brought God the Father glory. It brought Christ the glory because God, after Jesus finished the great plan of God uh, through his giving of himself on the cross, God seated him at his right hand, amen, so he was glorified, amen, exalted above everything that is because of what he accomplished on the cross, and he did it for sin, amen, the sin problem, and look what it says, it says he condemned sin in the flesh, the very, I like to say it like this, well, yeah, he, the Colossians chapter 1 uh, and verse 22. Two, three there teaches us he gave his flesh, amen, on that cross that we might have victory over our flesh, but also he condemned that very thing that was meant to condemn us, which was sin. The, con the condemnation has been lifted because of our faith in the one that was lifted up, Jesus Christ, amen. So he condemns sin in the flesh that, look at verse 4, amen, that the righteousness of the law, all of the righteousness that the law represented, amen, it was summed up in the person Jesus Christ and it came our way because of his death on the cross and we believed in that. Our faith is in that, amen. He said that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. There it is again who walked not, so we see that twice, amen, in verse 1, and here we are in verse 4, who walk not after the flesh, 
not after our own strength and ability. And you'd be surprised, though, however, and I have to, I have to check myself. You, we can be surprised, amen, how oftentimes we're walking after the flesh and we don't even realize it. Amen. Fle flesh is more prevalent and uh, operative in our life than we'd care to give uh, credence to today. So we have to, we have to, keep these things in check. We have to examine ourselves, amen, to be sure that we are walking in the Spirit, amen, and not according to flesh. It's so easy, and I've watched it over the years, and I have been found guilty of the same thing, and it is easy to, to call something, identify something, amen, to carry out something, and it was, uh, you know, it's something good, but we identify it as being of God and a move of the Holy Ghost when it's really really just us. It's the flesh. It's, it's really an ambition that has birth within us that's not according to the will of God. That's flesh, amen. And it, it, it rises to occasion quite often. The only way to keep that from just dominating our life and ruling and, and reigning in our life like a strong man on the throne of our heart, amen, is to keep our faith in the cross. There we're dead to the power of flesh. We're dead to the power of sin. We're dead to all of the allies of sin and anything that the enemy would use against us. That's the importance of the cross, amen. If we don't keep our faith in the cross where Christ can be crowned king on the throne of our heart, guess who's going to move in? It's going to be us. We'll begin, it's going to be us, amen. We'll crown us. We'll crown flesh. We'll crown our ambition. We'll crown crown what we do, which is apart from Christ, amen, we'll crown ourselves. We'll put ourselves on the throne of our heart. We'll be ruling and reigning, but only in our own minds. It's make-believe. It's pretend. It's not according to the purpose and the plan and the will of God. Amen. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. And once again, walking after the Spirit is identifying with what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. Allowing the Holy Spirit to lead. Allowing the Holy Spirit to move. Allowing the Holy Spirit to, to uh, do his perfect work in our life. And that perfect work, he only does a perfect work. That perfect work begins the moment that we are saved and it continues to carry out the will and the purpose and the plan of God, provided that we are determined to anchor our faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 is still true and still right just like it says. Amen. I believe that it still means exactly what it says. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 it says for the preaching of the cross is to the, not the resurrection or not anything else, not the preaching of Jesus Amen. We understand that it takes the person, Jesus, amen, and his sacrifice to provide us with the cross, amen, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God, amen, hallelujah. I still believe that that means exactly what it says, though we have a huge segment of people that were once preaching the message of the cross, amen, have begun to change that. They're perverting it. Amen. They're presenting a perverted gospel. It's a twisting of the scriptures, and they're good at what they do. It's very deceptive. Amen. 1 Corinthians, right behind that, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 in verse 4 says, Paul said, in my speech and my preaching, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words. That's what those do that I'm telling you about. They come with enticing words, but they're deceptive. They sound good. They're sweet. These people come with a humble uh, attitude, amen, if I can say that, a, a humble demeanor, a humble presentation, amen. That's how they deceive. But Paul said there, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words. That word enticing there means to be persuasive. It means, it actually means to be enchanted, persuasive, enchanted. 
persuasive, very persuasive, but it's an enchanting. It carries the same meaning as Paul dealt with Galatians, Galatians chapter 3 in verse 1 when he said, who has bewitched you, who has enchanted you, who has persuaded you, amen, to follow another spirit other than the one that saved you in the beginning. Because in the beginning, that Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, amen, made this message that I preach to you as if it was so real to you that it, that it was as if Christ was crucified right there in the very place that you was. Amen. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, the revelating, revealing work of the Holy Spirit. He come to reveal and do more than that as we'll look in just a moment. Amen. So that word persuasive, enchanting, takes us back to the bewitching uh, of Galatians 3 and 1. And then also Colossians chapter 2 and verse 18. This is a verse of scripture that me and Brother James have been looking at a lot lately. Amen. But it says in Colossians, go right along with where we're at right now. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 18, listen to this. Paul said, let no man beguile you. That beguiling means to defraud you of your reward. Amen. It means to, that beguile means to defraud you. Amen. They come persuasive, enchanting, but it's really a bewitching. It's a work of, uh, of something of something that's not the Holy Spirit. It's seducing spirits. They bring doctrines of devils, though they those doctrines of devil always have a veneer. They look like it is right, but it's wrong. Amen. They come presenting even at times a right message. Then they put in another message which God did not send. It's not according to the testimony of God. You see how deceptive that the enemy is. We've, we've said it for years, but we're seeing the truth of it more today than we ever have how error rides in on the back of truth. That's how it gets in. Amen. See, we, you know, we, we've gotten too smart to just buy off on outright blatant error. So the enemy knows to put that error sadly on the back of truth and ride in on truth so that that one that is beguiling and deceiving, he preaches the truth. And when he wins the body over, the next thing you know, he presents another message. And the people say, well, you know, my goodness, everything he said, you know, for 20 years has been right and good. Amen. What he's saying now must be right and good. We don't necessarily see it in the Bible, but he knows he must be right, you say. Deception. Deception. Let no man beguile or defraud you of your reward. And that reward, number one, is eternal salvation. And then number two, just hitting the two high spots, is victory in this present life. Amen. Amen. Victory now, both now and forever. Amen. But now I want you to look at something right behind that. Amen. These beguile and defraud you of your reward in a voluntary humility. And I know most of us has an expository study Bible, but I have learned that this voluntary humility goes far beyond what the note says. It's more than just uh, uh, self-abasement. It's more than that. It's far more than that. The volu- Listen to, the, to, to the, your pastor this morning. Amen. A voluntary humility is that which is really, I have just said it, is that which presents itself as truth, but it's wrong, it's specious. That is a noun. Speaking of one who is, is speaking of one who is deceptive. Amen. Like Absalom, he stood as as the people would go up to see David, the one who hated every false way, and he ruled in the in favor of the people. And the Bible says he stole the hearts of people, amen, by flattery, amen. And so we see that the enemy working in, in this realm today. And the thing of it is, I want you to know that there's very few people that are broadcasting what I'm sharing with you this morning. And, and But the thing of it is, those that are trying to build a huge following, amen, they will call this type of teaching cultic. 
Amen. When God calls it, amen, what the redeemed needs to hear, this is identifying with that straight and narrow way that God works in and that way that leads us home. Amen. amen. And, he, and, he's, and it, going on with what I was saying, amen, but uh, it's, it presents himself as truth, but it's wrong. His speech is a noun, one who is deceptive, but in, it's in a demonstration. But Paul said, my preaching, Paul knew what he was saying. He said, my preaching is not according to the wisdom of men. Amen. But my preaching is according to that which is of the Spirit and of power. Amen. It's of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and of power, that place where you'll find the power of the Holy Spirit at work, which is the grace of God. And he went on to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 5, he said, I present the, the priest of the cross to you in an understanding of the work of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 2 and 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men because your faith won't hold up according to the wisdom of men. Your faith won't pass the test of fire, which is when it's set up by the Word of God, when it's stood up by the Word of God. It won't pass the test of the Word of God. Amen. Why? Because it's the mere words of men. Amen. But Paul said, amen, my preaching is, is not according to the wisdom of men, but in the power of God, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit executes that power were made possible by faith in the cross. Are you with me this morning? Amen. The Holy Spirit, he, He's the one that makes it happen. Amen. We put our faith in, in what Jesus did at Calvary. The Holy Spirit sees that. He's the one that makes it happen. Amen. The, the power spoken of in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 is actually the power of the Holy Spirit. But he can only go to work when he sees faith in the cross. So it's identified as the power of the cross. We just read it in Romans chapter 8 in verse 2. For the law of the Spirit, he will not. He will not work outside of the realm of faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. I don't care how many people flock to it. don't care how pretty it is, how religious it is. I, none of that matters. None of that matters. What matters is, the, I'm asking a question, what matters is your faith anchored in what Jesus did at Calvary where God the Holy Spirit can work in your life. Amen. And that, that's to do and accomplish and carry out everything that you have need of. Everything, all things, Romans 8 and 32, all things that pertains to life and godliness, everything that you have need of. Amen. Let's, let's read a little bit in John chapter 16. I'm going to drive this home just a little bit more, John 16 and 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Now, let me say this. When he comes, he comes at salvation. I'm not disregarding the baptism with the Holy Spirit here, but the Holy Spirit, when he comes in, he comes in at, the, at our time of salvation, amen? That's when he comes in. Now, having understood that, let me read it again. How be it when? That takes away the question of when he shows up, amen? The Holy Spirit shows up when we are washed and cleansed by the blood sacrifice of Jesus. Now we have been cleansed. Now we become a, a dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Now he can abide within us because we've been cleansed by the precious blood of the Lamb. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, he's the Spirit of truth, and that truth is Christ and him crucified is come. He comes in at salvation. It says, now look, it says he will guide you in two. That's a little bit different. Well, it's really a lot of difference than just showing it to you. Amen. He will show it to you, then he will guide you into it. He will show it to you and he will guide you into all truth. He will show it to you, and then he's going to be the one, amen, that's going to guide you and bring you into it. That's the work he does. Whatever 
Christ has accomplished on the cross, it's the Holy Spirit that does the work of bringing us into it, amen, and showing it to us, revealing it to us, amen, more and more until that perfect day. It's more spoken of more there than just showing us the truth. Verse 14 says, He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine. What's that speaking of? Jesus said the Holy Spirit will receive of mine. That means he will re- He will identify with the me and what I did at Calvary. The, the one thing that's exclusive to Jesus Christ is his atoning work on the cross. That belongs to no one else but this man, Jesus, the Lamb of God. Amen. The one that was made perfect for that atoning work. Amen. He shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine the benefits of the cross. Jesus died on the cross, paid in full every benefit, gave us a great inheritance, but it is in reality the Holy Spirit that distributes those benefits among us. Amen. It's good that you would know that. Amen. Amen. The cross and the law, the spirit of life. He's not going to distribute anything that comes from the Father apart to us, apart from our faith in the cross. That is where we receive grace. That is where we receive all things that pertains to life and godliness freely. Romans 8 and 32. Amen. Praise God. Y'all with me this morning? Once again, the Holy Spirit not only shows us the truth, but he will guide us into all truth. He will, he will administer to us what he is showing us. He, what, what he's showing us, he will also administer to us. Amen. He's showing us, right? Jesus said he will show you that which is mine. He will show you Christ and him crucified. And then when your faith is rested in that, he will administer to us what Jesus died on the cross and paid for there. Amen. The work of the Holy Spirit is to carry out and administer in accordance with a plan. And that plan be the, being the salvation and sanctification of the believer in Christ. Amen. That's the reason we read 2 Corinthians 4 and 11 where the Bible says the Holy Spirit and really you can include the Word of God and you can include the, the gospel preacher, the righteous preacher that's preaching the exclusive message of the cross. It says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 11, amen, we are always being presented unto death. Amen. Amen so that the life of Christ might be manifested in our mortal flesh. There it is, the benefits, amen, of what Jesus paid for and accomplished on the cross, amen, is being administered to us, amen, by the Holy Spirit as he points us to and presents us and hands us over to what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen, I know it didn't quote that scripture in its entirety, but look, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let me tell, show it to you like this. Amen. The man with a business, the man with a business, whatever business you might have, might be making donuts, it might be selling vacuum cleaners, it might be whatever it is that you do, amen, that man that has a business, amen, he's in that place and he's carrying out that business. Amen. He's accomplishing the work that that business is to accomplish. It's the Holy Spirit. He's the man that does that. He's the, he's the third member of the Godhead. He's the, he's the one on earth presently today that executes and carries out the, the will, the plan of God. Amen. As our faith is registered in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. See, his work is complete and finished, but ours is not. What God is doing to us just begins the moment that we get saved and it continues until that perfect day when we go home to be with the Lord, amen. But that man that has the business, he's occupied with carrying out everything that that business represents. Same thing with God's business, amen. But that man that has the business, amen, he's going to show you his business. He's going to put an advertisement out there. we got an advertisement in the world 
Word of God. It's the Word of God pointing us to what Jesus did at Calvary so the Holy Spirit can work in our life. Are you seeing any of this this morning? Amen. So that man has got a business here in town, whatever it is, amen, he's pointing people. You know, I got donuts over here. Amen. He's pointing people to where he makes donuts. Now, he don't make donuts over at the laundromat. He makes donuts right there in his place of business. That's where he works. That's where he works. The Holy Spirit only works within the parameters, the confines, and the foundation of our faith in Jesus Christ, who he is at Calvary, amen. She, you, so you see that? So that man is pointing people to where he works, and then if you come to where he works, he will begin to service you. I said he's going to point you to where he works, to his business. And if you come to where he works, he's going to service you. He's going to provide what you come needing for. But the thing of it is, amen, that the business that God is carrying out through the Holy Spirit, amen, according to our faith in the cross, there's no bill for it because that the work of the Holy Spirit has already been paid for. The benefits that he brings to us has already totally and fully been paid for. The bill was handed to Jesus and he paid for it through his precious blood on the cross. Amen. The Holy Spirit will point to us to the place where he works. When we arrive there by faith in the cross, there he can go to work. There he begin, can begin to move in our life. There he can begin to, amen, manifest within us all the benefits and the inheritance that Jesus died on the cross to give us. <sighs> he does, he carries out and administers in according with a plan, that plan being the salvation and sanctification of the believer in Christ. Let's look uh, Let's look at Colossians chapter 1. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Colossians chapter 1. There's probably other verses of Scripture that might have uh, dealt with this a little bit better. This is just where I landed. Remember, the work of the Holy Spirit is to carry out and administer in accordance with the plan, and that plan is God's plan, not the plan of men. Paul said, I didn't come to you, amen, with the wisdom of men. I didn't come with those enticing words of men, amen. I didn't come to you, amen, to beguile you. I come that your faith would stand in the power of God, not in the wisdom of man, but in the wisdom and the power of God which is wrapped up in the cross, amen. That's the reason we sang this morning without hesitation. I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, amen, in Christ, who he is, what he did at Calvary. Let's look real quick to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. Giving thanks always, everybody got it, Colossians chapter 1 verse 12, giving thanks always, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet. That means we've been made qualified. What, what is it that qualifies us to receive anything from the Father? Our faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. It's not, we don't have to jump through the hoops. It's not something we do. It's not based upon our performance or our gifts. It's based upon the performance of Jesus on the cross where he gave himself, amen, that great, great gift of Christ dying on Calvary, amen, which has made us meet, qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Who are those that are uh, walking in the light? It's those that are clinging to the light pole. Christ in him crucified. Amen. His soul is clinging to the cross. Hallelujah. He said, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us. How did that translation take place? That was the work and the power of God wrapped up in the person the Holy Spirit. Amen. That was the Holy Spirit that did that translation that removed us out of the fallen lineage of Adam, brought us into the household of God, born again, a new creation. That was carried out by God the Holy Spirit, but it only happens when our faith is in the cross, the law of the Spirit of life. 
He's the spirit of life. Any other spirit is a spirit of death. But he's deceptive. He's going to present himself as life. He's going to present himself as, as bringing life, but he's really bringing death. Amen. He's going to t- come to you with a voluntary humility. Humility. He's going to come presenting himself, amen, to be something that he's not. And he's going to present himself in a matter of humbleness. Amen. amen. He's going to come. Be very humble, amen, but all of it is a ploy and a device to win you over and pull you away from the cross. Who has delivered you from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? In whom, verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood. In whom, in Christ... We have redemption through his blood, even also, even the forgiveness of sins. We have redemption. We have been forgiven. Hallelujah. And uh, we continue to have redemption, and we continue to be forgiven. Amen. Provided that we continue to anchor our faith in the redeeming place, which is the blood sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything I'm speaking to you about identifies with and, and uh, with what is said. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 real quick. And uh, uh, it may seem like we're moving to something else, but we're really not. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 and let's look at verse 12. Now, this is identifying right here, amen, with the gifts, the purposes of the gifts, the office gifts. And it says in in, in verse 11, it says, He gave these, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Most of the people, most of those in those offices in the modern-day church are either church-picked or mama-called. The Bible says He gave these. He gave these, those that are after the, uh, the heart of God that hates and despises every false way, just as David did and the one that people was going up to see. But then there was one that was standing beside the way and said, if you will come and join up with me, I will rule in your favor. He offers, you know, there's that uh, voluntary humility. He humbles himself, amen, and appears to be beneficial to the people, but in essence and reality, he is deceiving and causing the people short from going up to see the king. Let me tell you, stay the course, ladies and gentlemen. Keep clinging the cross and let's go up to see the king. If you go over to the side, amen, these voices were near unto those that go up. They're always very near, but they're not on the straight and narrow because that would be contrary to their, who they are their agenda and the things that they're doing. They're deceivers, and they go about deceiving. But it says in verse 12, these offices are are for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, that's the building up of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, till we... that. It, we're to, we're to identify with that person that God has sent preaching the cross, amen, because God desires to use him, amen, along with the Holy Spirit, amen, to build up the body, amen, and to bring us in complete understanding and unity and knowledge of the cross and what Jesus there did. Till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. And speaking of a man that's mature in, in, in the body of Christ, unto, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, we haven't attained it all yet, folks. Amen. We haven't attained it all yet. And I'm talking about this side of glory. I'm talking about it this side of eternity. Amen. We haven't obtained it all Yet, 
Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And that was during his present life. Right now, on this earth, he realized even to be being this great apostle, the cross preacher, God revealed to him, Christ did, the understanding of the new covenant and the message of the cross. But he realized he had not attained it all yet. There was more to be had. There was other rooms in our salvation to experience explore and that takes place this side of eternity Amen. give me more show me more the Holy Spirit will do that provided that we keep our faith in the cross it's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that's where he works that's his revealing place that's where he draws us to so that he can work in our life Amen. he draws us to that place so that he can work he draws us to the cross so he can work. He, as much as no doubt God desires to work in our life and through us, apart from faith in the cross, he is bound by a law, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ. He cannot, and he will not. No matter how pitiful we are, no matter how much we cry out to God, there will be something if your heart is right and you're not just not trying to do what you want to do, but you really want the truth and you're crying out to God with a sincere heart, He'll bring you the truth. Amen. He'll show it to you. He will reveal it to you. Amen. That person, amen, that's seeking the truth, God will not withhold it. He will reveal it to you. Amen. But once again, the majority of the people, they just, you know, their motive is, you know, I want more of God because I want more stuff, you say. God sees the heart. He desires to work in the heart of that person that wants more of his son, that wants more of his son that died on the cross. So he can show us more of his love through his son. Amen. It's verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children. Amen. Tossed to and fro and carrying about with every <coughs> wind of doctrine. And that wind is blowing hard today, church. That wind is blowing hard today. Carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. There's that person, amen, that's coming in in a voluntary humility is that humility is not the gift of the Spirit. It's a voluntary humility. It's something that's made up within him for the sole purpose to deceive. To present to you his message and not the message of God. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, there it is again, amen. Cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. They lie in wait to deceive. They lie in wait to deceive. While I'm right there, let me say, now, the enemy, he just, you know, amen, he, he's just waiting around and looking for an opportunity to slip in, to creep in. And he works through individuals. He's, he's just waiting around, amen, desires to overthrow your faith. They lie in wait to deceive. It might take these deceivers 20 years to work their way in. Come on now. They lie in wait to deceive. Now, I want to add something to that, amen, real quick while we're there. Thinking of that, talking about that word wait has nothing to do with the, the deceivers, but it has something to do with us. You know, the Bible says, especially in the Psalms, I was looking at it a couple of days ago, where it says, wait upon the Lord, amen. Let us wait upon the Lord. Well, one of those things that the distractors have done, they're taking that scripture from the Bible that says, let us wait upon the Lord. Let us wait upon the Lord. Well, what that does, if you don't have the, if you don't understand the true meaning behind that, we're just we're sitting here waiting on the Lord. Amen. Well, I'm waiting on my victory. Amen, I'm waiting on my deliverance. And how, boy, I tell you what, that's a good tactic for the enemy to use against us today. 
to cause us to think that we got to wait on the Lord for us to receive our victory or for us to receive the benefits no matter what they are. But that word wait actually means to abide. Let us abide in him. Don't you know so many of us were baptized into Jesus, were baptized into his death. Let us abide in him. Amen, because the only way we're going to miss out upon the benefits, the blessings, and the deliverance, and the salvation, and sanctification of the Lord is if we no longer abide in him by faith in the cross. John chapter 15, in verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, you're the branches. He said, abide in me. He said, if you abide in me, we do that by faith in what he did at Calvary, Romans 6 and 3, amen, then you shall bring forth much fruit. You'll bear much fruit because I'm the Holy Spirit now can bring much fruit into your life. Now you'll bear the fruit of Christ. Hallelujah. Now Christ to be manifested in your life. But the enemy wants you to move away from that and begin to wait upon your benefits and the blessings and the deliverance to show up. I know people have been sitting waiting for 20 years on the Lord. When the truth is, amen, when Jesus died on the cross, you received it all right then and there if you will only believe. That's what the Bible teaches, amen. We're heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ through his blood. We don't have to wait upon anything. It was all paid for at Calvary. We simply need to believe today, amen. It's just like today is the day of salvation. Now the appointed time you can be saved, saved today you can be delivered today you can receive whatever the Lord died to give you but the enemy will wish, whisper in your ear well you're not going to get it today you're not going to get it tomorrow you're not going to get it today either so guess what he'll speak that into your ear for 20 years and then your testimony is well I'm just waiting on the Lord I'm just waiting on the Lord. Amen. Well, see, that's not walking in the Spirit. That's walking in the flesh. You see, walking in the Spirit is, I've been saved now. I've got victory now. Amen. And I identify with that. Paul said in Galatians, excuse me, Paul said in Romans chapter 6 and verse 11, Reckon yourself indeed to be. It's not something that's coming. Reckon yourself indeed to be dead unto sin, but alive. That life un, unto God is that liberating, victorious, triumphant walk. Amen. Alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord and what he did at Calvary. It's today, folks. It's been made available 2,000 years ago, it was a past finished work, but it's a right now benefit to those that believe right now. And don't delay that believing, amen. Whatever I have need of, we have to, and I have to do this regularly, amen. There's some things going on. God, I need it, and I need you to come through, not tomorrow. That's going to be too long. That's going to be too far away. I need it right now, and I need it today. And I know that your son died on the cross 2,000 years ago, amen. That's been long enough for me, amen. I need it today. I believe in you today for a right now benefit and a right now victory. Praise God. That's what he's looking for. Yes. Thank you. Waiting on the Lord means to abide. To stay in that redeeming, liberating place and walk in what he has accomplished for us. You see how easy it is for the enemy to cause you to make excuses? See how easy it is the enemy to invade your mind and he, does, and he does it through these with a voluntary humility. They come to you and pat you on the back. They cry with you. Amen. Pat you on the back, cry with you. Say, oh, brother, I know you're hurting. Amen. But just wait a little bit longer. A little bit. Just wait a little bit. No. No. He died so you could have it today. It's time to start walking in 
what he has already given and the Holy Spirit has appropriated. Amen. It's the law of the Spirit of life. Amen. You see that? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Salvation, sanctification. Just real quickly, sanctification. Amen. That's so that person is saved, uh, is equipped where he can live saved. Amen. What verse of scripture? Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12 tells us there. I'm not even going there. Jot it down, Steve. But if we are not being changed by the grace we have, we have not been saved by the grace of God. If we're not being changed by the grace that we have, we have not been given, we have not been saved by the grace of God. Because if we've been saved by the grace of God, that same grace will change us and bring forth righteousness and godliness and true holiness and the benefits of Christ so that Christ might be manifested in our life. The Holy Spirit is always presenting us to death so that the life of Christ might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Again, the second Corinthians chapter 4 in verse 11. Amen. Praise God. So all of those things that are read in Ephesians uh, is specifically speaking of, uh, of the, the five-fold ministry, but it's really not. Amen. These are able, these ministers are able to carry out what the Bible the, uh, has said that they should carry out by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The, the five-fold ministry, the pastor, whoever he might be, amen, should work in unison with the Holy Spirit. He doesn't work apart from the Holy Spirit with his own mind, his own thoughts, his own will, what he thinks. No, what he works according to the mind of God and the Holy Spirit is showing him, excuse me, the mind of Christ and the mind of Christ is that to get to the cross and the Holy Spirit is showing us and revealing us and bringing us into the place where we will have the mind of Christ. And that mind is to go to Calvary because there we receive everything that we have need of. The Holy Spirit is going to recognize that and he's going to go to work in our life to bring it about. I'm not turning any of this into a glorified bellhop, but don't be moved away by this false idea of thinking that you got to wait on the benefits of God when they've already been paid for on Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago. Let's begin to walk in what he's already done. Ooh. Amen. All right, Paul said in Romans chapter 3 and verse 27, I like this, he said, Romans chapter 3 and verse 27, don't forget now I'm speaking about the cross and the law of the spirit of life. Amen. They go together. Romans chapter 3 and verse 27, Paul asked the, the church there, he said, where is boasting then? Where is your boasting? Where is vo uh, boasting then? He said, it is excluded. In other words, when he said that, where is your boasting? You know, and, and, well, I'm asking the church that a lot lately. Not just this one, but others, amen, on social media. What are you boasting in? What are you bragging about? What are you glorying in? based upon the things that you say and the message that you preach, it seems to me that you're boasting in your own self, that you're boasting in your favorite minister, that you're boasting in your favorite ministry. You're boasting in anything and everything except what God the Holy Spirit is pointing you to or is desires to pointing you to, bring you to, so that he can work, you see. So where is your boasting? Let's just ask, where is our boasting today? Where are we boasting? He said, he said, it is excluded. In other words, anything that you're boasting in, glorying in, he said it's ex excluded. It's not acceptable to God. The only thing God accepts is our glory, our boasting, and the cross. Galatians 6 and 14. God forbid that I should 
glory, saving the cross of our dear Lord and Savior, whereby he, the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. You see, where is your boasting then? Is It is excluded, I'm going to tell you that. It's excluded, whatever it is, if it's not the cross. Amen. God will not accept boasting in anything apart from the blood sacrifice of His Son. Amen. Boasting in anything other than the death of His Son only serves to keep us free from salvation. <laughs> Such should be a wake-up call to many because whatever we're boasting in that's what our faith is in amen boasting in something is identification of where our heart is at our mouth is going to speak do and carry out whatever is in our heart that person whose faith and trust is in from the heart in the blood sacrifice of Jesus amen that's what he's going to glory in that's what he's going to exalt. That's what he's going to praise. That's what he's going to worship. That's what's going to be on the tip of his tongue. You see. Amen. But he said there, I mean, where is boasting in? It's excluded. By what law? Question mark. Of works? Question mark. And he answered his own question. He said, no. No, God's not going to honor your works. He's not going to honor what you do. He's not going to honor the message that you preach apart from exalting Jesus Christ and glory in what He did on the Calvary. On Calvary, no, but by the law of faith. The law of faith. There it is. It is a law. By the law of faith. That's speaking of God honoring faith and what He provided us through the death of His Son. It's a law. It's, it's holding hands with uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 2, the law of the Spirit, the law of faith. The law is, If we're operating according to the law of faith, faith in what Jesus did at Calvary, then the law of the Spirit will operate. You see. You see that. You have to see that. And this is that narrow way. And this is the very way, though it's scriptural, I present it to you right from, from the Word of God and explain it to you according to the Word of God, using the Word of God, but yet they'll call us cultic. Amen. But no, that's not the case. We're simply determined to not be moved away from what God has given us to live a victorious life and enter into eternity with God the Father and the, and the Lamb slain, Christ. Forever He's going to be seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. There's going to be some great things going on, no doubt about that at all. Amen. But He's ever going to present Himself, amen, with nail-pierced hands. Can't imagine somebody standing before Him saying, well, I decided I needed something other than what you did at Calvary. No, it's always going to be required of us. It's required of us to enter into redemption, to enter into relationship with God. It's required of us to be saved, and it will ever be required of us identifying with what Jesus did at Calvary. That's the reason those nail-pierced hands will remain forever. You see that? By what law? Works? No. And you know, these that are presenting another Jesus, it's really works. It's not work of the Holy Spirit. It's works of their own making. It's works that they have manufactured. It comes from their own mind. The ministry that they're carrying out is of works. But it's not according to the finished work of Jesus on the cross. See all that? No. No but by the law of faith. The, the law of faith, uh, let's look at Romans chapter 3 in verse 25 if we need a little bit more explanation about what the law of faith is. Look at 3.25, Romans 3. Faith in His blood. Faith in His blood. The cross and the law of the Spirit of life. 
It's only going to benefit your life based upon the law of faith. And that law of faith is always going to be faith in His blood. Romans 3 and 25, faith in His blood where we are justified freely by His grace. And His grace is that Holy Spirit at work. The grace of God is God at work. He works through the Holy Spirit, by freely given by His grace. The Holy Spirit manifests it within us when He sees faith, proper faith registered in the cross. Justified freely by His grace and legally declared redeemed and, and legally declared righteous. It's right there if you look at it. God awards righteousness only on the basis of faith in Christ and His finished work on the cross. Amen. We'll give you one of them signs Brother Curtis has. Amen. You know them old church fans, you know, we used to have, we'd wave and you know how we'd fan with them old fans, had that popsicle stick handle. Amen. He's got one over there. Amen. He's got, he's, he's, and he's got, Wrote on it, amen. And once in a while, he'd take that old fan and hold it up. Amen. Amen. My preaching's a whole lot better than your amen in this morning, folks. Praise God. You know what makes it right? You know what makes it good? It's because it's all about Jesus. It's about the cross and the law of the Spirit of life. A little bit more, let's just uh, look at Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21. Paul said, Galatians 2, we always quote in verse 20. Right now, I just want to look at verse 21. Galatians 2 and 21. Paul said, I do not frustrate. That's more than a hindrance. Did you know that? Paul said, I do not frustrate. You know what frustrate means? I looked it in the dictionary again today, amen, to be sure that I had the proper understanding. But to frustrate means to set it aside. It means to move it out of the way of your flesh and your ambitions and what you are desirous of. You move the grace of God, you move it out of the way. Frustrate means to set aside. It means to reject. It means to bring to a halt. It means to bring to nothing. Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. I don't dare, amen, bring the grace of God to halt. Remember now, the grace of God is God at work. It's the Holy Spirit at work. That's what the grace of God is, amen. It's God at work. He said, I don't dare stop the work of the Holy Spirit. I don't dare stop the, the work of the, uh, of the Holy Spirit of grace. I do not shut down and bring to halt the work in the grace of God. Meaning, once again, he said the grace of God. Meaning to set aside, reject, or bring to halt. The grace of God meaning, I told you that five times <laughs> But the grace of God is meaning the Holy Spirit will no longer help us. That made me think about that. That means the grace of God. We shout grace, grace all day long, but it's not the grace of God in truth that's spelled out in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 6 because there the Bible tells us if you're embracing the grace of God in truth, which is faith in the cross, it will bring forth fruit. It's not going to be, there's not going to be any fruit bearing here apart from fruit of the flesh. Don't forget though, fruit of the flesh is that person who's doing his own thing. He has a voluntary humility, but he's beguiling and moving you away from the truth, you see. Just don't forget that. That person is that's doing the beguiling once again. He's going to be likened to that that's explained in 2 Timothy chapter, uh, what is it, 2, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, right in there somewhere. Correct me if I'm wrong. Amen. We said they have a form, they have an outward show of godliness, 
but they are denying the power thereof. True godliness, even though it looks like godliness, amen, they have denied the godliness of God. They have denied the truth, amen, but they look godly. They sound godly. They smell godly. But they have denied the power thereof, the power of true godliness. We need to be able to recognize it, maybe not at first glance, but it will come out. Amen. When they begin to change their message to something other than the cross, beware. Back up. Turn away. I don't think you have to run. We say that a lot, amen, But because we're not scaredy cats. But the Bible tells us repeatedly to turn away to avoid these. They carry out all the religious calisthenics. They have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power thereof, which is the cross, you see. He told us to turn from these. He said turn away from these. Turn away from these. Don't identify with them. Don't stand with them. Don't send them any money. Amen. Don't promote that which is not unto God. Don't promote that which is not according to the exclusive message of the cross because God's not in it, you see. God's only testifying of what he has already done, and he done it all at Calvary. I do not frustrate the grace of God, amen, for if righteousness come by the law, and remember once again, anything is a law outside of faith, no matter how well it's presented, no no matter how pleasing it sounds, anything apart from faith is a law. Said, I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness, there is that word righteousness means right standing with God. For that right standing with God is not going to come by law. It's only going to come by faith where you find grace and the Holy Spirit at work. Amen. Praise God. All else, all else, everything else, all else, guess what? is imaginations. Imaginations. Now, that's easy to happen. Even in the cross-preaching church, we have to be careful. Because the pastor, God forbid, could sometimes get bit by a big bite of stupid. It can happen. It can happen. God forbid that it would happen here. But I pray to God that you be equipped that if it does happen, you will be able to recognize such a thing. And then also in the same breath, the flip side of the coin is that you will know what the Bible is saying so that you will know that your pastor is preaching the truth and you won't go about saying he's a cult, but he is preaching what Paul preached. You see. Okay. For if righteousness come by the law, that's any type of law, many have made their preaching to exclude the cross and have made a law within their own selves, and the only thing that will come out of that is destruction. Remember, Egypt was destroyed for their rejection of the blood. And there's where the righteousness come. I hadn't even finished it yet. Galatians 2 and 1. Then Christ is dead in vain. Christ died on the cross so that we could receive righteousness, right standing with God, so that God the Holy Spirit can work in our life. The cross and the law of the spirit of life. That's in Christ Jesus by faith. Amen. Egypt was destroyed for their rejection of the blood. Amen. And and then, you know, even Israel, and even Israel, horrors were carried out in Israel and came upon Israel, which continues even today because of the rejection of the blood sacrifice of Jesus. 
You see that? You know, you know what you wonder, well, why is all of this going on over in Israel? It's because they had rejected the blood sacrifice of Jesus. And it's they're not going to change, and God's not going to continue, God's not going to stop bringing horrors upon Israel until Jesus returns with nail print hands, amen, and a, a vesture dipped in blood, and then they will say, Yes, he is the Redeemer. He's the one that died on the cross. He'll turn everything around then. But the peace accord that's signed, it doesn't, it's not worth a pile of gum. If it accomplishes anything, it's going to be temporary. It's going to be short-lived. Amen. The only thing that's going to turn Israel to the crucified Christ is the return of crucified, the crucified Christ. Today, Hallelujah, we have been revealed, we have been shown the crucified Christ and praise God, amen, we have turned already to embrace the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah, amen, so because we are walking in that truth, the horrors of God that would have been brought, the wrath of God, the judgment of God, amen, has been expelled, it's not coming our way, God is not going to drag his bride through the tribulation, amen, he's going to take us out of here as he deals with Israel. And the tremors from that are going to be felt around the world. Target is going to be Israel. Amen. Y'all with me this morning? Galatians. Let's go there. I've got something written here, but I can't recall exactly what it is, it's here, no doubt for, oh yeah I do, Galatians chapter 3, again, verse 1, and I'm, I'm really looking back at what I said in the beginning, those, don't let any man beguile you, God said it, I just repeated what God said in his word, the apostle Paul said, who cast a spell upon you, who, who, who bewitched you? Where did that enticing, where did, where did that come from? So Paul said in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1, Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, there it is, that I know the word malignant influence there is written, but it's an influence that's not of the Holy Spirit that shows us Calvary so that he can work in our life. It's another influence, you see. It's another spirit in operation. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? What's our obedience to the truth? Is it us jumping through the hoop, selling hot dogs, and going out here and doing something uh, great and spectac spectacular in the eyes of men, the world, and most of the church? No, we are obey we're able, we obey the truth by being obedient to the faith. We obey the truth by having our faith anchored in what God given us so God can work in us. That you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has evidently been set forth and crucified among you. It happened then, ladies and gentlemen, it's happening today. Far and wide it's happening today. Those that came into the message of the cross, they would say, oh, wow, what a revelation, what a truth. It's almost as if I can see right before my eyes Christ crucified for me. And it's not so much us looking to the cross as it is understanding what he accomplished there and the benefits that he died to give us, the benefits that he purchased on the cross through his death so the Holy Spirit can manifest those benefits within our lives, our mortal flesh. And he said, This only would I learn of you. Let me be sure I'm right. Yes. 
Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? There it is. God's honoring, bringing remembrance to the law of faith where the law of the Holy Spirit can work. Amen. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Did you receive the Spirit working in your life that transformed, translated your life and, and saved you and redeemed you? Did you receive that by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Remember, Paul said, I come preaching the cross. I didn't come with the wisdom of men. I didn't come with that most popular message. I came preaching the cross where the Holy Spirit would work so that your faith would stand not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? And if they answered truthfully, yes, we received the Holy Spirit because of our faith was in what you preached, which was Christ and Him crucified. So Paul had to say, well, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you and moved you away from where you were redeemed? Who moved you away? Hallelujah. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish having began in the Spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? And so many that began in the Spirit through faith in the cross, which is the only place the Holy Spirit will work, now... They're trying to perfect themselves through the flesh by preaching another message other than the cross. It's deceptive. Sounds right. Looks good. Looks right. But it's deceptive. They come with a voluntary humility. They present themselves even to be preaching, preaching the cross. I know one now that their, their church is called the power of the cross ministries, but they're no longer pointing anybody to the cross. They're no longer pointing. See, that's what the enemy wanted to do in the beginning, to win you over so that you would say, now they must be right because they were so humble they humbled themselves to the cross in the beginning, but they're not now, you see. Hallelujah. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, amen, it's not so much how you began the race, though it is important. It's how you finished the race. So many have began right, but they're not going to finish in the faith. I said, so many, this is the reality of where we are today. Many began right, but guess what? They were not able to endure sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is the cross alone. The exclusive message of the cross. Let the Holy Spirit work in your life. Fighting the good fight of faith. What did Paul say when he came to the end of his life in, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4? He said, This is what made, this was the most important thing in his life on that day. It wasn't how many churches that he founded, how many souls were saved, but when he came to the place that he knew that he was about to step out into eternity, he said, I have kept the faith. I finished the course. I fought a good fight. That's the most important thing for us today, that we stay on the course that God put us on in the beginning, that we continue to fight the good fight of faith. That doesn't mean we fight against sin because sin was dealt with, with by Jesus on the cross. Amen. We'll, we'll abide in him. Finish the course. Fight the good fight of faith. That means it might be a fight. And it means it might be a literal fight at times for you to be determined to know nothing save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Having talked to a <laughs> good number of folks over the years, 
I know that it can come down to that, to where it's a fight. It is a fight. Not speaking to anyone about anyone, but I've talked to enough people to know that the majority of the time that fight boils down to where do I stay with the message of the cross or do I stay home and keep keep peace in the family? We've been there. Sister Debbie and I have been there. We had to draw a line. We had to make a decision. As hurtful as it is, I'm sorry. We love you. I love you dearly. We're going on with Jesus, and the only way we can do that is to take up the cross and go on with him. He said. Are you with me? See, there was a day when even the mother of Jesus, Jesus' brothers and his mother came to him one day. He was teaching in a house. Surrounded by people teaching the gospel. I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No man come to the Father but by me. He's preaching to the people. His mother came, and I always thought this was strange. But I've seen a lot of things in the past 20 years that were, have really been strange. We have to be determined just no matter how strange and unexplainable we have the ability to explain it. We just keep taking up the cross every day. Lord, I'm going with you. I'm going on with you. I'm staying with what you showed me 20 years ago that became so real to me, just like with the Galatians. Right before my eyes, it was so real. Christ crucified, that was the answer that I needed in my life. Drew the line that day. I've had to draw the line many, many times since that day. Had to draw a line. Said, no, I'm sorry. I can't go with you. I love you and I pray for you, but I can't go with you. Can't go. Can't be moved. Mary sent word into the house where Jesus was teaching and said, call him out to where we are. There's Mary and his brothers. You know, he said to have several brothers, main ones that we know and recognize, James and Judas. They were half brothers of Jesus, amen, in all reality. But here they was, and probably some other brothers, maybe even some sisters, not sure, don't know. But I know it says that there's Mary, his mother, and his, and his brethren. Mary sent word in, said, have Jesus come out to where we are. You see, we ought to hear, have Jesus come out to where we are. The thought is, you know, the man, I ought to carry some weight. You know, Jesus is in there preaching to people we might not even know. Amen. But this is Jesus' mother sending word. That ought to carry some weight. That ought to move him out here in the yard where we are. That ought to pull him away. Oh, but see, that's the whole idea of it. Satan knows who to work through to pull you away. Some of those. Satan knew exactly who to work through to pull them away. He knew. He knew what would work. But that day it didn't work with Jesus. <laughs> you know what he said? He didn't say this out of arrogance of being mean. But there's times we have to be determined to hold the line. That good soldier's holding the line. Holding the line. That line is Calvary. Jesus just sent the messengers back and said, These are my mother. These are my mother. These are my brothers. See, draw the line that day, refusing to be influenced by even his mother and his brethren. 
you say. That's an example for us. There comes time we have to just draw the line and go on with Jesus. I cannot allow you to influence me. And the reality is if you allow to yourself to be influenced by the influences, they're actually distractors and deceptors at that particular time, though we love them. But if we go their way, not only... Is our soul placed in jeopardy? But even theirs as well. Amen. It's just like unplugging the deathbed, removing the life support. They have no hope apart from Jesus. The only way we'll influence those that we love is to keep holding the line, keep clinging to the cross, walking in the Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our life until we draw our last breath on this earth. Fight the good fight. Finish the course. He brought us in by the cross. He'll take us through by the cross and he'll take us home by the cross. First thing we're going to see, nail pierced hands. Brought us home. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Fight that good fight. Finish the form, the course. Keep the faith. Amen. I hope we've all learned something today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Debbie, Brother Denny, I'm just going to close right now. I feel the Holy Spirit just leading me to just close with what's already been said. If I go any further, I believe we'll We'll lose sight of what we've already heard. Let us think about, let us think upon these things that we have heard here today. Amen. Don't just allow it to be, don't allow it to be, don't let it fall to the ground. Amen, but hallelujah. Let it be deposited upon a heart that's fertile. A heart that's made fertile ground today and these things will manifest unto changed lives. Amen. Praise God. I'm going on with Jesus. I'm clinging to the cross. And when we stand in His presence, every trouble, every test, every trial, it will not be remembered. Amen. It won't even be a thought. Because we'll be standing in the presence and the grandeur and the glory of our great God and the Lamb. Hallelujah. We'll be there forever and ever and ever and ever. Time without end. Hallelujah. That will outweigh anything that we've had to suffer through and endure and even sacrifice here. Amen. Sacrifice of Christ is what makes the difference for us today. Amen. Hallelujah. It's all available to us right now. If you don't know Jesus, today is a good day. Now is the appointed time. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. You can believe upon him what he did at Calvary. Repent of your sin. We've all the Bible teaches we all have sinned. All. And fallen short of the glory of God. But that can end today. If you just repent and ask God to forgive you to cleanse you and wash you with the precious blood of Jesus. And if you will just believe by faith in what he did at Calvary, you'll be washed, you'll be cleansed, you'll be changed. You'll be made every bit whole. You'll be a new creature, a new creation, born again in Christ Jesus. Let that be today. Let that be today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Got a runner amongst us today. Hallelujah. Amen.
with your power live inside of me it's power today we spoke about it the power of the Holy Spirit is bringing us to the cross we anchor our faith in the cross and we abide there by faith he'll work in our life He'll begin right now. He'll begin today, the moment we register our faith. He'll change us. That's what he does. The spirit of the bride says, come. And whoever is a thirst, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. Come to Calvary. That's where the water of life flows today. That's where the spirit of life works today. That smitten rock, Christ crucified. Oh, hallelujah. Let's join in. Let's sing. Hallelujah. Live inside of me, and he can do it through faith in the cross. Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. Fill us with your power. That power resonates in the cross, administered by the Holy Spirit. He's the living water. Oh, hallelujah. That never drying fountain. That's Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Oh, yes. He said to bring your every care and cast it upon him. There's nothing too heavy. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, hallelujah. Take complete control. Not my will, but thine, oh, Lord Jesus. Yes, he is. I feel Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul does. Oh, yes, it does. It burns within me. Give me more of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. How about just lifting your hand toward Jesus, giving him praise and giving him glory, giving him honor in this house today. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're listening by internet today, amen, I pray to God you've been touched, you've been blessed, you've been encouraged, you've been, in, you've been convicted, and you've been changed by the power of God today. Hallelujah. You know, oftentimes at home, I think about this young man right here. I think about this little one that Emily holds in her arms. I think about these young ladies right here. I think about Josh. Hallelujah. I think about the days out in front of them, the days ahead. There's no reason for us to think that the course ahead is not going to be one of great difficulty. It's going to be very testing, very trying for the young ones, amen. Parents, we have a great responsibility, amen, yes, and us ministers to take this gospel to a lost and dying world, amen, but to also be reminded the greatest work that has been given us is the work that abides within our own home 
taking care of our family. Raising them up first and foremost. Before I'm a minister, amen, I have to be a father. Amen. He said to raise them up in the way that they should go. And that that speaks about fencing them in in the gospel. Let's be sure that we're fencing the young ones in with the gospel. Amen. Should if we go by the way of the grave, they'll have something to cling to. I remember when Daddy said. I remember when Grandpa said. That Jesus and what he did at Calvary was my only hope. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. children. My day is soon upon you, my children. I have equipped you with this gospel. I have poured out my life for you yes, that Jesus. you would know how to raise, how to raise not only your children, but to also raise up the banner which I have Hallelujah. laid out before yes, you, yes. that all men can be drawn unto the power of the Father that lies in my blood that I have shed for you. Be not deceived in these days. Know that I do not change. My word has not changed. The sacrifice that I've laid before you has not changed. It is the very place that you can come and receive grace, knowledge, understanding in all things that you need to be equipped in the days ahead. Let that be your confidence, says the Lord. Let that be your confidence, my children. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, I feel Jesus in this place. Just a portion of that. One more time, amen. Can we do that? Yes. Hallelujah. Just, just a portion, amen. The Lord is here today, amen. The Holy Spirit is here today moving because we're exalting the King of kings, the Lord of lords, lifting up Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. He said, this spake he of his death, that's how we're drawn initially. That's where we're drawn to always, every day. Hallelujah. So that we might receive any and every benefit that we might need. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I feel Jesus in this place. Don't leave this house. Do not leave this place the way that you came in. Let's leave all offenses behind. I've had to do that. There's been many. They've stacked up. they piled up. I had to come to a place where, I'm, Lord, I made up my mind to leave it behind and go on with you. To not get held up by the offenses. Let's go on with him. Hallelujah. Let's go on with him. Yes, Lord, clinging to the cross every step of the way. Hallelujah. 
every step, always, all the time, always. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, it's always hard to dismiss from a service like this. I don't know if the Lord's ministered to you. He surely ministered to me this morning. Amen. But as we depart from one another in the company of this place, amen, let's continue to be with one another in the Spirit, lifting up, praying for one another. Hallelujah. Amen. And then I pray to God that should the rapture not take place. That's my choice, though. Today is fine. That's my choice. Today will be good, Brother Lake. Hallelujah. But should he not bring us home today, Amen. I pray to God I see you at that next appointed time. Amen. God bless you each and every one. Love you all. Look forward to seeing you either here or there. Amen. Praise God. And there is mighty fine. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Love you all. Praise God.